Howdy everyone, August here. Uh, today I will be doing the gender tag, which was originally created by Ashley Wilde several years ago. So I'm a little bit late to the party, but I thought this would be a good way to start off my channel. So I will put a link to Ashley's channel in the description down below. And here goes something. Question 1. How do you self-identify your gender, and what does that definition mean to you? I identify as a transgender non-binary person, and more specifically I identify as an androgyne. Uh, androgyny in general is defined as some mixture of both masculine and feminine traits. So for me, being an androgyne means that I am an even mixture of both man and woman, both in my identity and in my presentation. Question 2. What pronouns honor you? I use they, them, and their pronouns. Question 3. Describe the style of clothing that you most often wear. Most of the clothes I wear are just practical and comfortable things because I work in the outdoors a lot. And unfortunately, it's not really practical to wear six inch stiletto heels down to the riverbank. So most of what I wear just ends up being just jeans and t-shirts, or if it's warmer out, I'll wear cargo shorts and a loose tank top. Um, also, flannel is my best friend, but unfortunately it's warming up outside, so I'm having to put it back in the closet. Um, when it doesn't get in the way of my work, I also like to wear jewelry. I wear a lot of earrings and necklaces because I like to mix stereotypically feminine and masculine aspects in my presentation just to kind of present outwardly what I feel internally is that mixture of feminine and masculine. Uh, it's not related to gender, but I do tend to wear a lot of earth tones, a lot of greens and browns, and I guess that kind of works because nature just transcends human ideas about gender and sexuality. So it's a w way, I guess, of expressing my neutrality towards gender. Or maybe I just really like plants. Yeah, I think it's the second one. Question four. Talk about your choices with body hair. How do you style your hair? Do you have facial hair? What do you choose to shave or choose not to shave? So I prefer to keep my hair short, just out of the way. I used to have really lo long hair when I was in middle school and high school, but it was really heavy and it gave me headaches and I honestly just didn't like the way it looked on me. And I like having short hair a lot better. Uh, I don't really style it though unless a special occasion arises. Um, facial hair. I have a little bit of dark hair on my jaw and on my neck, but it's really sparse and scattered around, so I generally just leave it alone. Sometimes I trim it, but most of the time it doesn't really make a difference. In general, I choose not to shave my body hair. I just kind of let it do what it does. Uh, the exception to that is that I sometimes shave my underarms because I am a dancer. And for the time being, at least, I'm not really comfortable having visible underarm hair when I'm dancing for an audience in a costume because I'm still mostly read as female and I'm worried about negative reactions to that. Uh, once I have top surgery, hopefully I'll be more comfortable allowing it to grow out and just being comfortable with the way I'm presenting myself and hopefully I won't be as afraid of negative audience reactions. Question 5. Talk about cosmetics. Do you choose to wear makeup? Do you paint your nails? What type of soaps and perfumes do you use, if any? On a day-to-day -day basis, I don't wear makeup. Um, I dabbled with it a little bit in high school and it just felt silly to wear it. Uh, at the time I described it as feeling like I was wearing a clown mask. But I just really don't like the way I feel about myself when I'm wearing makeup. Uh, the exception to that is when I'm performing, when I'm dancing. I wear makeup because it's part of my character and the emotion that I'm portraying to the audience, and so it doesn't feel silly then. But in general, I don't like wearing makeup. Uh, as far as stuff like painting my nails, I would like to paint my nails, but it just feels weird, not from like an emotional or mental standpoint like with the makeup stuff, but just it physically feels weird on my hands, like it's thrown the balance off, so I can't really do that. Uh, I do paint my toenails, unfortunately no one can see them, but I can see them and that's the whole point anyway, I guess. Uh, I don't really use any perfumes or colognes, mainly because I have really sensitive skin, so any products I use that are in contact with my skin are usually unscented and hypoallergenic, just to be on the safe side. Question 6. Have you experienced being misgendered? If so, how often? 
I get misgendered on a daily basis because for the most part, people don't look at someone and just think to themselves, hmm, I bet that person uses they them pronouns. It's just not really a thing that happens in our society. Um, sometimes people gender me as male, sometimes they gender me as female, sometimes they start off thinking I'm male and then switch to female and then they get really confused and then everyone is confused and it's just not a good time. <sighs> this is really nerve-wracking when it comes to things like public restrooms because I've been yelled at for being in the women's restroom but I've also gotten really weird suspicious looks in the men's restroom. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to decide whether people are reading me more as male or more as female and which bathroom it's safest for me to use. And I'm just out here trying to buy groceries, y'all. <laughs> Should not be this stressful. But in an ideal world, I would like to be read as androgynous and addressed with they, them pronouns. Uh, since that's not really liable to happen, though, I try to be content with getting a mix of being read as male and female because at least it shows that I'm being read in an ambiguous way by different people. So I'm at least partially achieving my goal of ambiguity. Question 7. Do you experience dysphoria? How does that affect you? Oh boy, do I experience dysphoria. Uh, yeah, I struggle a lot with dysphoria and I have for a very long time, even though I didn't have a name for it until about two years ago. Uh, in addition to the social dysphoria I experience from being misgendered, my main source of physical dysphoria is my chest. Uh, I bind on a daily basis, and I'm planning to get top surgery as soon as humanly possible. So I'm in the process of doing that right now. I've been talking to a surgeon. But in addition to that, I also feel dysphoric about having a uterus and about my voice. I wish my voice was a little bit lower and more androgynous, but I'm, it's not enough that I'm willing to take testosterone because I'm not too keen on a lot of the other effects of testosterone. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of voice training to try and lower it. Uh, let me know how it sounds in the comments, <laughs> maybe. But uh, the extent to which my dysphoria affects me on a day-to-day -day basis varies a lot. Some days I can barely get out of bed because it's so intense, and other days I can ignore that underlying hum of dysphoria enough to be productive and happy. And as I've gotten further along in my transition, uh, the good days have increased in proportion compared to the bad days, and hopefully as my transition continues, that trend will also continue. Question 8. Talk about children. Are you interested in having children? Would you want to carry a child if that were an option for you? Do you want to be the primary caretaker for any children you may have? I do not want children. I have known since I was very young that I do not want children, and the very idea that I am capable of carrying a child is just nauseating to me. It's just, it feels so fundamentally incorrect that I don't know how to cope with it. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's not to say that I hate kids. I don't. And if my brother ever decides to have kids someday, I would love to babysit them from time to time, bake them cookies, take them camping, and all that stuff. Basically, I just want to be the cool relative. <laughs> Question 9. Talk about money. Is it important to you to provide for a family financially if you choose to have one? Is it important to you that you earn more money than any partner you may have? Do you prefer to pay for things like dates? Are you uncomfortable when others pay for you or offer to pay for you? This is kind of an interesting question because I'm aromantic and asexual, and I don't really ever plan on having a long-term partner or raising a family. Those are just thing not things that I'm interested in. But if I was interested in that, I can't imagine that it would matter to me if I made more or less money than my partner. Uh, the thing that would matter to me, I imagine, would be just that we're able to have enough money to live comfortably the way we want to. There's not, there doesn't need to be a hierarchy. Uh, and I can't really answer the other parts of this question because I don't go on dates. Question 10. Anything else you want to share about your experiences with gender? The big thing that I want to share about my journey with my gender identity is that representation is important and it's important for people to share their stories. 
back when I was in high school, I would obsessively Google, like, why don't I want my breasts, and things like that. And there wasn't a whole lot of information out there on trans people. I found a couple of articles by trans men, a couple of blog posts, and while I found some similarities with them up to a point, I knew that I was not a trans man, and so I assumed I was alone. I couldn't find any information on non-binary identity, and so I just went for years and years thinking I was an outlier. And it wasn't until years later when I was in college that I found out there were other people like me who exist outside the binary of man and woman. And that's why I am sharing my story online here, because the more of us there are who talk about our experiences, I think, the easier it will be for people to find us and to know earlier on that they're not alone. Well, that is it for this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see from me in future videos, please leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye! I just swatted a moth out of the air. Sorry, dude. <laughs>